JICA Lecture Series of Japanese Development Experience to date. In line with the JICA Global Agenda, Cooperation Strategies by Development Issues. How has Japan realized universal access to safe drinking water? Japan's Infrastructure Development. The case in urban water supply systems. Introduction. This lecture answers two questions. The first question is, why was it possible to extend water supply coverage to 98% of the total population in Japan? And why was it possible to supply safe drinking water 24-7? This graph shows the time course of water supply coverage, the cases of waterborne diseases, and the infant mortality in Japan. Since the first modern water supply system was constructed in 1887, the water supply coverage increased to 30% in 50 years. This supply coverage is nearly equivalent to those in many of the least developed countries today. After that, during the Second World War, most of the water supply systems in Japanese cities were destroyed by air raids. In the 1950s, because of low service coverage of the Japanese water supply systems, women fetched water using carrying poles every day, and most of the people could take baths only once in a few days. However, between 1955 and 1975, when national resources were able to be used for economic development, the water supply coverage in Japan increased dramatically from 30% to 80%. In addition, 24-7 supply of safe drinking water was achieved. As a result, cases of waterborne diseases and infant mortality rates drastically decreased and Japan has achieved longevity of its population. The Japanese people have been set free from the labor of fetching water. The sanitary condition of the living environment has been significantly improved. In the following section, I would like to clarify the reasons why it was possible to build such high-quality water supply systems in Japan. The second question is, what are the reasons that capability of Japanese engineers developed successfully through learning foreign technologies during the process of modernization? Since the late 19th century, Japan has been building the modern state by incorporating modern ideology, socio-political systems, and technologies. In 1887, the first modern water supply system comprising water treatment facilities and pressurized pipes was built in Yokohama City. Yokohama City was the nearest and the most important port to Tokyo. The water supply system was designed and constructed with the supervision of a British engineer named Henry Spencer Palmer. Construction of modern water supply systems in Japan commenced under the supervision of foreign engineers. But soon after that, Japanese engineers took over the job of foreign engineers. And they constructed the modern water supply systems in the major cities in Japan. Why was Japan able to raise engineers who acquired foreign technologies in such a short period. Expanding access, financing based on consumer pays principle. Now, let me answer the first question. The first key is financing methods. From the time of early water supply construction, 
municipal bonds were issued to raise funds for construction of water supply systems. The issued bonds were repaid by the income from water tariffs. In the early stage, because there were no Japanese underwriters, the municipal bonds were underwritten by foreign investors. Later, with the endorsement of the national government, public financing mechanisms were launched to supply funds raised in Japan to water utilities as long-term and low-interest repayable fund. This made it possible for the public financing institutions to underwrite bonds issued by water utilities, and thereby large amount of money were made available for construction of water supply systems. The repayment periods were said to be long, so that not only the current generation, but also future generations would help in repayment of those bonds by means of paying water tariffs. For example, the Tokyo Water Works Bureau expanded its water supply production capacity by fourfold in 20 years between 1955 and 1975 to meet the increasing water demand due to population growth and improvement of living standards. In order to finance those construction projects, they issued municipal bonds and increased the water tariff to repay those bonds. In those days, because of high economic growth and income increases, the ratio of water bill to household income was low. In addition, the service quality of the bureau was high. Therefore, the customers accepted raising tariffs. Securing high quality service, setting a clear objective to safeguard public health. The excellence of Japan's water supply systems lies in the fact that it has supplied safe and drinkable water 24 7. Why was it possible to achieve this? There are two factors. One factor is that the policy objective of water supply was very clear to improve public health. In the Meiji era, the Public Health Bureau of the Ministry of the Interior administered water supply utilities. And even later, the Ministry of Health was designated to oversee water utilities from the perspective of promoting public health. The Water Supply Act clearly stipulates that water utilities in Japan are obliged to supply drinkable water to protect public health. Therefore, all employees of water utilities are engaged in their work with high aspirations to supply drinkable water from the tap. To do so, they chlorinate water and maintain high pressure to avoid infiltration of contaminated water from outside of the supply pipes. In addition, standards and guidelines have been published, such as facility standards, water quality standards, design guidelines, and maintenance guidelines. All the water utilities abide by these standards and guidelines. Materials and chemicals used for water supply are certified and examined by the Japan Water Works Association, which contribute to the improvement of safety and quality of the materials produced by private companies. These efforts have resulted in very low leakage from supply pipes and the safe drinking water efficiently supplies to the public. Securing high quality service, customer oriented approach, democratic management and governance. Another factor is that water utilities are managed democratically, reflecting customers' opinion, keeping customer service in mind. The Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications administers utility management, and the Ministry of Health 
labor and welfare, regulate and administer water quality and water treatment technologies. In addition, water utilities are operated as public enterprises and are subject to the surveillance of the municipal assemblies. The basic principle of public enterprises is to be operated with their tariff income and to have clear accounting that is independent of the local government's general accounting. When water tariffs are to be revised, for example, a forum such as council is set up for democratic discussion by listening widely to the opinions of citizens and experts. In addition, the water utilities in Japan provide public services to the citizens. They assume the consumers to be their customers and continuously try to improve the customer's satisfaction. They set up customer centers, listen to the voices of customers, publicly disseminate information, and tirelessly improve their services. Training of engineers. Next, I would like to answer the second question. Also, the Japanese people traditionally consumed liver, pond, and well water, we built aqueduct to meet the large water demand in the growing cities. This picture shows the Tamagawa Josui Aqueduct of 1653, which brought water to Tokyo called Edo in those days. The total length of Tamagawa Josui Aqueduct was more than 40 kilometers, and the slope was very small only two per mil. This difficult task had been accomplished in such a short period of eight months. Edo was the largest city in the world with a total population of one million. Nevertheless, the water supply systems in Edo made it possible to maintain a good sanitary condition which was supplied to all the foreigners who visited Japan. When Japan opened its ports to foreign trade vessels in 1854, waterborne illnesses such as cholera found their way into Japan and spread all over the country to count over 150,000 cases of cholera patients in a year. As a countermeasure, modern water supply systems have been constructed in the ports and major cities, starting with the one constructed in Yokohama City in 1887. In those days, foreign engineers gave technical advice to the Japanese engineers. At first, they learned technologies as assistants to the foreign engineers, but they learned them quickly and extended their new knowledge to the colleagues and subordinates. The foreigners had given advice only in the initial cases, and later the Japanese made water supply plans and built them by themselves. There are two factors that made it possible to learn and share the technologies for the construction of water supply systems. The first is that people willing to learn from others with passion were engaged in construction of the modern state. In the Edo era, which lasted until the mid-19th century, there was a social division by birth. Such social division was demolished in the Meiji era, and young lower-class samurai and upper-class farmers came to the forefront of the country building. These people attended private schools called terakoya and physical training schools for kendo, where they learned from their teachers. They were able to read and write letters and nurture diligence and high ethics. They were eager to learn for the sake of development of the state and to find a way to play their own roles. In the Edo era, the teachers at Tilakoyo were townspeople, samurai, and monks. 
but they were replaced by foreign engineers in the Meiji era. The second factor is the tradition of respecting teachers and the willingness to teach what they learned from their teachers to others. People were willing to learn, and once they acquire knowledge or skills, they became teachers of others. Thus, it was taken for granted that the Japanese engineers who learned from foreigners in the Meiji era would then teach their subordinates. Learning classical literature and kendo in the Edo era had evolved into learning technologies in the Meiji era. The government of Japan supported higher education by setting up universities. In 1904, an organization was established that has evolved into the Japan Water Works Association of today. And water suppliers have exchanged and shared technologies and knowledge ever since. Even today, human resource development is considered to be important. The National Institute of Public Health and the Japan Water Works Association offer many training courses. Each water utility also offers on-the-job training and some of them are on large-scale training centers. In addition to the national qualification programs, such as professional engineers, some of the water utilities also certify qualified staffs and engineers. The human resource development programs are fundamental in supporting construction, operation, and maintenance of water supply systems in Japan. Summary Japanese water utilities have realized a 24-7 supply of drinkable water. The keys to its realization are firstly, its financing mechanisms, secondly, its clear policy objectives, thirdly, a customer-oriented approach and democratic management, and lastly, human resource development to support these keys. These keys are also important for construction and management of other infrastructures. However, there are emerging issues. The Japanese population is declining, and the local municipalities are depopulated. The water supply facilities are aging and need to be renewed, but the revenue of water utilities is shrinking. Therefore, efforts are being made to overcome the emerging issues by consolidating water utilities which had been run independently by each municipality, and by promoting public-private partnerships. In these times, water utilities are engaged in securing water resources to adapt to climate change, in reduction of energy consumption, and in small-scale power generation for reduction of greenhouse gas emission. Japan is one of the largest donors of official development assistance to developing countries in the field of water supply systems. Utilizing its experience in water resource development and construction and management of water supply systems. In partnership with local municipalities, JICA provides financial assistance to the developing countries for construction of water supply systems, as well as technical assistance for human resource development and setting legal and policy frameworks. For example, in Phnom Penh, the capital city of Cambodia, facilities were repaired and capacity was expanded under a long-term plan to reinstate water supply systems, which was devastated by the civil war. As a result, in less than 10 years, Phnom Penh had a 24-7 supply of drinkable water, and the water utility expanded its service sustainably while maintaining a profit in its operations. We would be pleased if Japan's experience reported here 
could be of help for your country's future development. Japan has modernized from a non-Western background to establish a free, democratic, prosperous, and peace-loving nation. In this sense, Japan is one of the best development models for developing countries and regions today. In addition, Japan has contributed to economic growth in many developing countries, especially in Asia. Therefore, we would like to share with you Japan's unique experiences of modernization, which is different from Western countries, and cooperation for developing countries through this video material. This video series provides a comprehensive summary by development issues according to the lineup of JICA's cooperation strategy, called the JICA Global Agenda. <laughs>